Recently, I decided to take my telescope down off of my permanent mount here in my observatory to get a more perfect polar alignment and to do some maintenance. About that time, I decided that I'd go ahead and purchase an advanced CT laser collimator from Holtec. I'd, I'd never tried uh, that before. Uh, I'd read some reviews that said it was a pretty good tool. I've owned lots of Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes throughout my life. In fact, I was uh, one of the first people to put in an order when Mead first came out with the Schmidt Cassegrain. And so over the years, basically what I've done is I've uh, relied on, you know, defocusing a star and using the diffraction rings. And as all of you know out there who go into Schmidt Cassegrain, that can be very frustrating trying to find a night of steady seeing where you can defocus on a star and not have it dancing all over the place. And in fact, those are the best nights for viewing and doing planetary work, so you don't want to waste them collimating a telescope usually. I then went to an artificial star. I purchased, uh, actually I made an artificial star with an LED light, and um, I'm lucky here on my lot to have enough room where I could separate the artificial star, and actually that worked really good for my portable Schmidt Cassegrains. With the instrument that I have here in my observatory, I don't have a field tripod, and so this process here would be much, much easier with a field tripod. But I wanted to give uh, some thoughts on uh, the laser collimator here, uh, now that I've used it, and uh, maybe this will help some of the rest of you out there. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to say, let me go ahead and grab the camera. Sorry for the shakes here. But uh, the first thing that I'm going to highly recommend is that you replace the screws on your secondary mirror with knobs. Now, these are Bob's knobs. And I have uh, used Bob's knobs for years and years on all of my Dobsonian telescopes and all my Schmidt Cassegrains. And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to collimate a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope with a little Allen wrench or a Phillips screwdriver. Uh, fumbling around in the dark with that, uh, reaching around while you're trying to check the patterns on the back end of the telescope. And in fact, it's really quite dangerous to miss the secondary and uh, hit the corrector plate there, which is something that you certainly don't want to do. And so um, replace your, uh, your little screws up there with Bob's knobs. It'll make it much, much, much easier to, um, to collimate your telescope. Now, just some thoughts here. If you had a field tripod, it would be much easier uh, in the altazimuth mount, uh, especially. You won't even need a wedge to, to achieve a level tripod to work with. Now, since I don't have a field tripod for my Schmidt Cassegrain, I used this little uh, stool here that I made years ago to change motorcycle tires on. It's very, very stout. As you can see, I've used uh, you know mat board shims. Uh, being an artist, I have lots of mat board laying around on my concrete floor here in the observatory to achieve a perfect level with my little platform there. And then you can see I have repeated that process with the uh, telescope as well. So it is in perfect uh, level condition uh, in both directions. And that is critical. As those of you that know that, uh, you know, work in engineering and science, uh, when you are, you know, trying for precise measurements, any little errors along the way, especially up front compound uh, along the way and, you know, th throw things way off on the, on the other end. So you want to be very careful at every stage to make sure that everything is level. Now, the, the first job, once you get that level, is, is getting the tripod appropriately placed in front of the telescope with the uh, Hotec laser collimator on it. And uh, having read a lot of articles, people said that usually ends up being a little bit less than a tube length. And you can see from mine here that it's pretty much in that um, range. To square up the tripod on the floor initially and, you know, make this as easy as I could for myself, what I did is I, I put a couple of tracks of uh, masking tape across the bottom of the floor. And I marked some registration marks on that. Yeah, so that when I placed my tripod, it would uh, be closer to square and save me a little work on the other end. And then I put the uh, Hotec stage that has uh, altitude and uh, 
azimuth adjustments on it uh, to help you know square up that uh, laser collimator to the telescope. Okay, now a lot of people complain about Hotex instructions. I have the PDF here on the floor. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I actually think they did a, a really good job writing up their instructions. And I'm just going to kind of distill things down to the essence here. Step number one is to orient the telescope squarely to the plate. And the way they have you do that is to take a little piece of uh, cellophane tape here to diffuse the, the pattern, the, the cross pattern here. And so I'm going to place that right over the center laser and you can see that it creates a really nice donut of light. And then it's really a simple matter of using your um, azimuth and your altitude controls here on your telescope to uh, line up that donut uh, within the concentric circles there. Uh, really quite a straightforward process and uh, the light is bright enough that it's really easy to see. So that's really, that's step number one. Alrighty, step number two is to go ahead and remove the cellophane tape. And now what we're going to do is we're going to square up the laser collimator with the telescope. And to do that, you simply work with the altitude and the uh, azimuth controls here on the, the stage that Hotec provides in the kit. And what you're trying to do is get those little crosshairs within those double lines on the target grid. Again, it's really, really quite a straightforward process. Now, here is where some people got frustrated uh, as I read the reports on using this tool. Hotec basically says that be prepared to do this, you know, it's, it's an iterative process. You got to do it, you know, two, three, four times to get it perfect. And I guess some people expect it just to be perfect the first time they try. And then when they go to collimate it, something's not quite right. This has to be absolutely parallel and squared up. Otherwise, the whole process really doesn't work when you get to the point of adjusting the, uh, the uh, bobs knobs on the secondary there. It just, it, it doesn't work. So here's where you spend your time getting it square. And really, it's really quite a straightforward process. You put the cellophane tape on there to square up the telescope. You take it off and adjust the stage, and then you check it again, and you, you go back and forth two or three times, and you'll find out that it's not really that hard. It just is a little bit tedious, as are a lot of technical things. So I've got mine basically perfect. If we were to uh, look at that, I'm going to zoom in there real close, but it's virtually perfect. And if I, again, uh, go ahead and um, throw up the diffuser on there, you'll see again that that concentric circle still remains perfect. And so now what we are going to do, now that we've taken the time to do this correctly, we are going to proceed to collimating the telescope. Okay, the final step in this process, obviously, is to collimate the optical train. And so you turn on option number two here, and it projects the target grid and the pattern of the three lasers, you can see the little, the three little uh, holes on the target, those are the projecting lasers, and the wide circles, the blobs there, those are the returning reports from the three laser beams. And the trick is to get them all in a concentric circle, and you can see that I have done that here. They are all concentric. And this this is a this again is an iterative process. Uh, once you get them there, you think, oh great, that's wonderful. But it says go back now and and do the first two steps. Check the diffusion donut. Make sure the telescope's lined with the target. Take that off. Make sure that the target grid, the four little target lines, are still you know within those double lines on the on the target face there, and then retest your collimation. Now, I didn't uh, do this on video because I didn't want to bore everybody, but I went through about seven or eight iterations before I got those all perfect. And so, again, I think a lot of people complain because it's a tedious process, and it is. It's, it's a little bit more complicated than uh, just you know, diffusing a star. But the good part about this is that 
you're in control of everything. You're in a static environment here indoors. You can do it during the day and you can get it perfect if you take the time to do it. And so final recommendations on the Hotec laser collimator for Schmidt Cassegrains. If you've got the money, uh, it costs, uh, when I bought it, it was about $450, I had $450 something dollars, I think from, and I shopped around to get the best price I could at the time on it. And so depending on, you know, when you buy it, I don't know what it will cost, but it costs a heck of a lot more than an artificial star flashlight costs. And I guess the, uh, you know, proof will be in the pudding. I'm going to put this back up on the uh, mount and the first uh, clear night that I have, I'm going to uh, do a star test, probably on Polaris. That's what I usually use. Uh, get a decent seeing night and see if I can get a good diffraction pattern there and uh, check it out. The, the good news is, is that when I went to do this laser collimation here, it wasn't that far off. So apparently what I had done before was, you know, pretty close. So we'll go, we'll go ahead and see. Now, some people will say, well, I would never spend that amount of money when I can just use a star test. Well, that's kind of the way I was for years. And uh, I might go back that way as well. But it was fun to try this. And uh, it was fun to go through the process of using a laser collimator. I have a really nice uh, Hotec laser collimator I use on my Dobsonian. And I absolutely love it. I mean, I can get that thing collimated in less than five minutes. And it's just smooth. Uh, I have Bob's knobs on there too, by the way. Anyway, I hope this is helpful to Schmidt Cassegrain owners out there that uh, you know want to hear from somebody who's actually used this before. Uh, as always, clear skies, everyone.